What's up guys, Alvaro here and welcome to the bilingual stock market channel again. On this channel we talk about the markets but we do it in English and Spanish as well so you can pick your preferred language and in this video and as I do it Mondays through Thursdays I want to make a quick stock market update so I want to break down some technicals going over S&P 500 and the Nasdaq 100 but also breaking down from a technical standpoint for stocks that tomorrow are going to be on the very top of my personal watch list so with that further ado let's get right into the video and the markets were once again a total disaster today guys red day all across the board and for the most part the indices gave up the gains that were gained last Friday. So the Russell 2000 went down 1.08%, Nasdaq went down 2.14%, Dow Jones went down 0.94%, and the S&P 500 went down 1.30%. And now the big question is, what could potentially be happening throughout October? So listen up, guys. This September, last September, this you know, the month of September that ended uh, last week was the worst September for the markets in 10 years. The markets went down on average. I am talking about the four major indices. So the, the four major indices went down 4.80% in September. Okay, so listen up here. October. So on average, October is positive when we are up year to date, but we are talking about uh, a small gain of only 0.30%. However, when September is negative and we are year up to date, so October is usually a negative month for the markets with an average negative return of 0.94%. So it looks like the ride might not be over, guys. And you guys know, I have told you plenty of times here on the channel that for the most part, September is a very positive month for the markets. So we have to be, we have to be patient. History doesn't need to repeat itself. But if it does <laughs> repeat itself, we, are, we might be down 1% in October. And take a look at the, the way that October is kicking off, right? With a, the second trading session of the month is a red uh, trading session all across the board. When it comes to the sectors that trade inside the S&P 500, the best performing sector today was the energy sector. But I would say, guys, that the best performing sector today was the utility sector. So we had a day in which the big money of Wall Street went after defensive stocks. And why do I say that the energy sector, why I am not considering the, the energy sector as the best performing sector today? Well, because the energy sector and oil more specifically, they have been holding their own their own party, guys. This this has been unbelievable. We we really have a a puzzle piece on the table. So last week, because in, in today's trading session, the U.S. dollar went uh, went down a bit. Nothing crazy, but it went down a bit. We can make the case that okay, perfect. The the, the U.S. dollar went down a bit, and therefore the energy sector went up 1.63 percent. I think that the OPEC meeting also affected in a very positive way the price of oil. However, guys, last week we have two days in which the US dollar had very solid days to the upside and the energy sector was also going up. Something absolutely insane and crazy, guys. Uh, for the most part, uh, raw materials and commodities, let's just, let's just say commodities uh, for argument's sake. So commodities and the US dollar are inversely correlated. So that was absolutely insane, guys. I think that on Wednesday and Thursday of last week, so both oil and the US dollar were pulling up at the same time. Something absolutely unbelievable. So I would say that I am not going to say that the energy sector was the best performing sector today, even though it was, because I don't know, something something very weird is going up, uh, is going on in the case of uh, energy. So the markets were after, I mean, the big money of Wall Street uh, went after 
defensive stocks, guys. We have a bunch of uncertainties out there. We have a possible uh, beginning of a tapering process. We also have uh, fears, inflation fears, because the 10-year Treasury yield has been going up. So whenever you guys see that, uh, you know, that the best performing in, uh, sector, sorry, in the S&P is utilities, that is a sign that there is uh, fear out there. And needless to say, guys, the tech sector, which is the most important sector inside the S&P 500, it was absolutely nasty today, guys. It went down 2.32%. And the financial sector, another very important sector, went down today 0.87%. And you guys know, when financials and tech go down, there's nothing to do. We are going to have a red day in the S&P 500. And now let's go ahead and take a look, by the way, and before going over, guys, uh, before going over the 10-year Treasury yield and the S&P 500, I want to show you a trade that I broke down in the video that we posted yesterday on Moderna. I took the trade uh, in a very similar way to what I told you guys in yesterday's video. This was a successful day trade that I closed with a 300 buck profit. So this morning I purchased 20 shares at of Moderna at $312.50, paying 6,250 bucks. And I ended up selling out of my 20 shares. This was a 30 or 35 minute trade, guys. This was a very quick trade. So I ended up selling my 20 shares at $328.30 and I was paid $6,566. I made, I made a bit more than 300 bucks, something like $315. And I pretty much took this trade exactly as I told you in the video that we posted yesterday. I also picked up today one call option of Beyond Meat. I, I won it. You guys know that I am holding the bag as of now with Beyond Meat. I own 40 shares at $106.13. And as of now, I have an unrealized loss over here of 108, 181 bucks. So today I purchased the 100 call of Beyond Meat that expires on, sept on September 17. And I paid, I forgot how much did I pay for this call option. I paid $1,015. And what's my break-even price? 110 bucks. I think that Beyond Meat is very likely to be above at or above 110 bucks by mid-December. So these were the two trades that I uh, took in today's trading session. When it comes to the bad old 10-year treasury yield, the 10-year treasury yield went up a lot this morning, guys. However, the bulls failed at 1.50% and uh, the 10-year treasury yield closed today's trading session at 1.48%. So my hope, I am hoping for this, obviously, I want to see the 10-year treasury yield breaking the support of 1.44% and maybe paying a visit to this 180 SMA and the one hour short near 1.37%, that is going to be, a, that is gonna, that is going to represent a huge relief for tech stocks. And let's hope for the 10 year treasury yield not to break to the upside 1.50%, guys. Needless to say, 1.55%. I think that the main reason why the uh, most of the big tech stocks and higher multiple stocks sold off today in such an aggressive way was the 10-year treasury yield. We have uh, inflationary concerns. And mind you guys, on Friday, we have the jobs report of September. That is going to be a market mover. So put that down on a sticky note. That is going to be on Friday at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So if we saw a lot of downward pressure when it comes to tech-oriented stocks and growth stocks and higher multiple stocks today, with the 10-year treasury yield being rejected at 1.50%, I don't want to think about what is going to happen, guys, if we finally see the 10-year treasury yield bursting above 1.55%. Oh, boy. That is going to be very, but very negative for most of the stocks that we are investing in, guys. S&P 500. So the S&P closed exactly, guys, at 40 300. Unbelievable. Once again. So the most important task, guys, for the bears in tomorrow's uh, trading session, let me pull up here the four hour chart and let me zoom in here. 
and they need to take on 4280 guys so they failed today at 4280 they also failed on friday at 4280 so that's the most important task and mind you guys if the bears of the s p let me move my screen a bit to my left okay so if the bears happen to be successful at breaking 4280 to the downside immediately after that they are going to have to deal with another important area of support that 4272 watch out for that area guys we are talking about a former area back from june 25th and we are also talking about a former area of overhead resistance back from june 24th and we are also talking about a former all-time high in the case of the s p 500 and since the bulls of the s p look so weak as of now guys i would say that the most important task that they need uh, to accomplish in maybe tomorrow's trading session or maybe let's say i don't know maybe in the course of this week is going to be taking on 4330 this looks like i mean as of now it looks like a tough uh, task but if we happen to see a turnaround tuesday tomorrow which might be the case uh, take into account guys that whenever the s p 500 goes down more than one percent on mondays we usually have a turnaround tuesday with an average gain the next day we have a turnaround tuesday with an average gain of 0.60 percent so if that were the case tomorrow guys and since we close at 4300 so if the s p goes up 0.60 percent we might be closing tomorrow a slightly above 43 series so that's the most important task for the bulls of the s p the relative strength index is at 35 points the s p is approaching oversold territory but no doubt about it the bears are in total control of the s p 500 and by the way i didn't tell you guys i picked up some spy shares so let me go over robin hood once again let me see what is going on i think i think that i have a, a small gain over here i picked up 20 spys at 427 dollars and 86 cents and as of now i have an unrealized gain of 22 dollars i think that we we might see a relief rally sooner rather than later throughout this week nasdaq 100 the worst performing index today going down 2.16 percent and closing today's trading session at 14,472 points and check this out guys from all-time high or from peak to bottom we already have a correction in the ndx of 8.50 percent so let's say that tomorrow the nasdaq 100 has another two percent uh, negative negative day tomorrow we are looking at 14,127 points and in that case the relative strength index is going to be even lower guys as of now the rsi of the ndx is at 27 points so the ndx is very but very very over sold as of now i don't think that we might go any lower than this before seeing a relief rally so as i just said the bulls closed today's trading session at 14,472 points so the first line of defense for the bulls tomorrow is going to be 14,400 points guys 14,400 points is a previous area of overhead resistance back from june 24th and if we happen to break this area of uh, former overhead resistance that now should act as a new support then we might see a flush down guys down to 14,100 points maybe i think that we might see 14,200 14,200 is also a former area of overhead resistance in which the bulls of the ndx failed back on june 17 but we are we are already very oversold so i think that the ndx is due for a relief rally in which case the most important area of overhead resistance is going to be 14,762 points which happens to be a former area of support that acted as such for the ndx back on august 19 but the ndx couldn't look any uglier guys for real and take a look at how the the the, the death cross that i told in yesterday's video is about to unfold so this is looking ugly guys let's see what happens the only uh, let's say a fact that might play in favor of the bulls over here is that the ndx is very but very oversold 
So we might see a relief rally tomorrow at least, or worst case scenario, up to 14,772 points. And now let's go ahead and take a look at AMC Entertainment before going over Facebook, which was the talk of the town today, guys. I don't have much to say in the case of AMC. AMC goes down today 4.39% and it closed, it closed today's trading session at $36.77. So let me zoom in here on the four hour chart. And the main task for the bulls tomorrow is going to be reconquering $38. And mind you guys, if tomorrow I happen to see AMC paying a visit down to $32, which happens to be an area of lower support back from August 20th and also back from the back from mid July exactly i think that that's a very attractive spot uh, in order to either pick up some shares of amc or maybe buy call options the, I, I mean i would have to check on the implied volatility of the calls of amc which is usually very high However, since we have seen a sizable drop in the case of the stock of this company, maybe the IV could be below 70%, in which case I might be interested in getting some calls or maybe I, I am going to be selling put options. I think that 32 bucks is an in interesting spot in order to sell some puts of AMC. If we take a look at the relative strength index, it is at 43 points. So we can make the case that if AMC happens to pay a visit tomorrow down to $32. The relative strength index is going to be even lower, and that is going to increase the likelihood for the bulls of AMC to find support at a previous area of support and then bounce back up. So watch out for AMC tomorrow paying a visit to 32 bucks, finding a good support over there, and then, as I just said, bouncing back up. And now let's go ahead and take a look at Facebook, guys. And this is getting uglier. I am... Sorry, I am a frequent user of WhatsApp, and before starting to record this video, WhatsApp was still down, so we have a global outage when it comes to WhatsApp, Instagram, and Facebook. I think that today this, this was like the perfect storm for Facebook. So this morning, we had a former executive of Facebook, a whistleblower for the most part, um, saying a bunch of negative things about um, Facebook, guys. Let me see if I can find the news over here. Well, I didn't find the news over here, guys. Uh, but this lady, which is a former executive of uh, a former executive of, of Facebook, said that that Facebook has some sort of policy in favor of uh, promoting hate and in favor of promoting what else she said? Hate. And I don't know, fake news or something like that. So, uh, you know, case in point, Facebook went down today 4.89% and it closed today's trading session at $326.23. And later on today, the, the, that was that, that occurred this morning, guys. Later on today, some dude came on the air on CNBC and he was saying that he suspects that Facebook is cooking, uh, you know, the, the, the numbers uh, of, of the subscribers of WhatsApp and, and, and Instagram and Facebook. So, geez, this, this was, uh, I mean, I, I have been dealing uh, with the stock market since years ago, guys, and I, I don't remember such a perfect storm hitting Facebook uh, before. So, obviously, picking up some shares of Facebook over here, guys, it takes guts. Uh, so 322 bucks, uh, Facebook found support today at 322 bucks, which happens to be a, a former area of support back from June 3rd. So I need to see a solid process of consolidation, guys, of Facebook slightly above 322 bucks in order to even consider picking up some shares of Facebook. And obviously, this is a tech company. So if the 10 year treasury yield happens to go up, uh, you know, a lot and in a consistent way in the upcoming days, we can expect the Nasdaq 100 to keep on taking a hit. And mind you guys, if Facebook happens to break the support 
that I just told you about at 322 bucks, what are we talking about? If that area of support happens to be broken to the downside, the next foreseeable area of support for Facebook is going to be 297 bucks, which happens to be a former area of support back from April 19, but we are also talking about a former area of overhead resistance in which the bulls of Facebook failed back in late March. I don't think that Facebook can drop this hard, uh, you know, once it for all, because as of now, we can see the relative strength index of Facebook at 26 points. So the stock of this company is very, but very oversold. As of now, we might see, I, I don't know if maybe a relief rally. I, I can see Facebook trading sideways as slightly above 322 bucks. So the relative strength index can pull up a bit. And then depending on the news that we might get, throughout this week and depending on the 10-year treasury yield and depending on whatever happens in general terms with the Nasdaq 100. So if the markets happen to keep on pulling back and the RSI of Facebook is a bit higher than now, uh, because as of now it is at 26 points, I can see Facebook breaking this support of 322 bucks and maybe paying a visit down to 298 bucks. So we have to be very careful, guys. And uh, obviously we also need to consider the fact that we are seeing a death cross and the for hour chart you guys can see this 100 this 50 sma crossing below the 180 sma so i don't know guys i i need to see a process of consolidation and we need to to let's say uh, uh see what happens with we need to weigh uh, the news that are going to keep on coming out throughout this week before starting any position in the case of facebook and now let's go ahead and take a look at another victim of today's trading session good old square square went down today 5.45 percent and it closed today's trading session at 226 dollars and 25 cents and today in the, in the case of square something that caught my eye guys is that square is some sort of bitcoin related stock and Bitcoin had a very solid day today. I think that it, it actually it tested the resistance of $49,000 or $50,000 throughout today's trading session. But regardless of that, Square went down a lot today. So I'm thinking, guys, and obviously depending on whatever happens with uh, tech-oriented stocks tomorrow, what's out for Square at 222 bucks? I think that 222 bucks is is buy zone <coughs> in the case of ticker symbol SQ. And when we say, <coughs> sorry guys, when we say 222 bucks, we are talking about a former area of support that acted on two occasions back in March. If I were able to pick up some shares of Square at 222 bucks, then my price target is going to be the next foreseeable area of overhead resistance for the face for Facebook. Uh, Facebook guys, sorry, for Square in the year 241 bucks. 241 bucks is a previous area of support that already acted as such for Square back on April 20th. So picking up some shares of Square at 222 bucks and selling out of our shares near 240 bucks or 241 dollars, we are looking at an 8% profit. This would be a very solid profit. And take into account that uh, Square closed today's trading session at $226 and the relative strength index of the stock of this company is already at 30 points. So we can make the case that if Square happens to pay a visit down to this area of former support near $222, its relative strength index is going to be even lower and that is going to increase the likelihood for the bulls of Square to find support at a previous area of support back from March and then bounce back up. And now let's go ahead and take a look at Meta Materials. This was one of the stocks that I was able to take a successful trade on last week. So Meta Materials went down today 8.59% and it closed today's trading session at $5.11. So let me zoom in here on the 4-hour chart. And this is another stock, guys, that is getting closer to a very interesting spot at $4.80.
Four dollars and eighty cents is a former area of support back from September twentieth. But we are also talking about a former area of overhead resistance in which the bulls of meta materials felt back on April twenty nine. And on top of that, we have the one hundred and eighty SMA getting closer to this former area of support and resistance on the four hour chart. So this is going to be one of the stocks that is going to be on the very top of my personal watch list tomorrow. And if I happen to see Meta Materials finding a good support at $4.80, I'm going to be willing in order to pick up once again 300 or 400 shares of Meta Materials, in which case my price target is going to be the next important area of overhead resistance for the stock of this company at $6.64 in which case I am going to be able to lock a profit of almost 36%. So I am knocking wood, guys. <laughs> I hope I can take this trade away that I am describing it. $6.64 is a previous area of overhead resistance in which the bulls of M-Mate felt back on September 28. And if we take a look at the good old relative strength index, of the stock of this company, it is at 33 points, so you guys already know the rest. The stock of this company is almost in oversold territory, so if it happens to pay a visit down to $4.80, the RSI is going to be even lower, and you guys already know the rest of the story. Okay, and the last stock of this video, come on guys, Neil, who is buying the dip? Come on, drop a comment down below. You guys know that I am a long-term investor in Neil. Let me show you, by the way one of my long-term positions in NEO. So I own over here 600 shares at an average cost of $17.24. And as of now, I have an unrealized gain of 9,650 bucks. I should be buying more NEO here, guys. I gotta be honest. So NEO went down today 5.60% and it closed today's trading session at $33.40. And you guys know that NEO killed delivery numbers for the month of September. So this is pretty much an overreaction. I mean, I get it. The Chinese government is trying to, you know, crack down tech uh, companies such as Baba and Tencent and JD.com. But is the Chinese government going to aim at NEO? Is the Chinese government going to obtain uh, any benefit uh, you know, by uh, putting some pressure or by take, taking some uh, harmful measures against Neo. Now, guys, uh, the Chinese government need a second uh, EV player in China after Tesla. They need a local winner in China after Tesla. So Neo is going to be, in my opinion, that's my my bull case. In the case of Neo, Neo is going to be the second EV player in China four or five years out. So this is a no-brainer. And the next support for NEO is going to be at 32 bucks, guys. 32 bucks is a previous area of support that acted as such for NEO back on March 4th, guys. We are seeing prices in the case of NEO, or we might be seeing prices in the case of NEO that, that we haven't seen since months ago, since March of this year. So at 32 bucks, guys, I am going to be very tempted in order to either pick up some shares to add to my long-term positions, or maybe I'm gonna be tempted in order to sell put options with a strike price of 28 bucks or $29. That would be a way of making easy money, in my opinion, uh, with NEO being uh, at these uh, prices. So <clears throat> if any of you wants to pick up some shares of NEO at 32 bucks, then I think that a reasonable price target in order to close any position, any short-term position in the case of NEO, because in the case of my long-term position, I am looking at five years out in order to sell out of my shares. So in order to close <clears throat> a short-term trade with NEO, $39, guys, $39 is a previous area of support back from July 27, but we are also talking about a former area of resistance in which the bulls of NEO failed on several occasions back in late August. So picking up some shares of NEO at $32 and selling out of those shares at $39, we are looking at a 17% profit trade. So, I mean, I, I truly believe, guys, and obviously, full disclosure, I already told you I am a long-term investor in NEO, so I got skin in this game. 
for 32 bucks is an absolute steal in order to start any trade with NEO. Relative strength index at 30 points, very but very low. So you you guys already know the rest of the story. So if NEO happens to pull back and pays a visit down to the lower support of 32 bucks, the relative strength index is going to be even lower, and that is going to increase the likelihood for the bulls of NEO to find support at a previous area of lower support and then bounce back up. And with NEO, I am going to wrap up the video. Thank you very much for your attention and thank you very much for hanging out with me once again. Remember and keep in mind, guys, that here on the bilingual stock market channel, we are posting a stock market update videos Mondays through Thursdays, three or four hours after the market closes. So if you want to get all of the notifications of all of our videos in a timely manner, you have to be subscribed to the channel, but you also need to activate the notification bell right up there. Follow us on Instagram as well, guys, at bilingual stock market. And remember that this is the bilingual stock market channel, the YouTube channel in which we talk about the markets, but we do it in English and Spanish as well. So you can pick your preferred language, but most importantly, this is the a YouTube channel in which we know that the wonderful world of Wall Street is not for geniuses, it is for entrepreneurs just like you guys and myself. My name is Alvaro and I will see you guys tomorrow once again, three or four hours or maybe five hours after the market closes. Peace out.